Okay. Let's get started on chapter four. In chapter four, we're going to talk about energy from combustion. Okay, energy from combustion. In this chapter, we're talking about the reaction of combustion. Basically, means what? Means burning. Okay, burning what? Burning fuel. So in this chapter, we're not only studying some basics about energy, okay, which is physics. Okay, which is physics. If you guys remember, in chapter one, we talked about what are matters. What are matters are anything with what? With the mass and occupies volume. Okay, for example, bacteria, dust, atoms, anything that matters. But energy is not one of those. Okay, if energy is not one of those, we, 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 don't, we don't assume energy is a matter. So, technically speaking, energy is not in the scope of chemistry, but it's related. So, we're learning some physics, but what well, energy. And also, of course, in this chapter, we're going to study a lot about fuels. Because when you talk about combustion, you're burning what? You're burning fuels. Okay, burning fuels. So, here are, are some questions. Okay, some questions we're going to answer in this chapter. Okay, what are fuels? And how much energy is released when they're burned? And uh, how do we use fuel to generate electricity? Okay, well, how, how does a power plant works? And uh, what are environmental implications of obtaining and using fossil fuels? Okay, and when we talk about fuels, nowadays, most fuels we're using are what, fossil fuels. And finally, the, what are the benefits and, and sustainability of using biofuels, which are alternatives, okay, because we're always trying to find alternatives for, for fossil fuels. So let's get started. First is take a look at the overall structure of this chapter. The overall structure of chapter is based on the reaction called combustion. Okay, combustion, again, is basically a professional way of calling burning. Okay, it needs three requirements. Okay, a combustion react needs three requirements. And the other day, my daughter was kindergarten was was telling me that okay, her teacher taught taught them about these three factors about uh, requirements. I don't know if you guys even know that they're 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 teaching those kids in kindergarten. Okay, you need three factors. One is the fuel. Okay, you need something to burn, right? Another one is what. You need an oxidizer because all combustions are oxidizing reactions. The most commonly used oxidizer when we talk about burning is simply what? Oxygen in the air. You don't even need pure oxygen because we, we, we have what? 21% of oxygen in the air, which is a good, good percentage already. Okay? And besides that, of course, you need something initiate. You need heat to start the reaction, okay? like ignite the start the burning reaction, so like a heat or ignition process, a source. And uh, of course, in this chapter, in this chapter, we spend a lot of time talking about fuels. And fuels can be solid, liquid, and gas. And in fact, this chapter, we're going to see all three types of fuels in three different physical states. Okay, so this whole chapter is based on combustion. Now, we said combustion, most important use of combustion reaction is to what? Utilize the energy from this reaction, okay, from this reaction. So first, let's take a look, what is energy? And what are the fundamental laws of studying energy? Okay, first, energy, okay, energy. The definition of energy is basically two words, work, and heat. Okay, if you found somebody ask you, well, what is energy? En energy is basically, you can use two words to summarize what is energy. Energy is work. Okay, then, but of course, energy is the capacity to do work. Okay, to do work. The movement against a force, like this. If you drag something, like pulling a cart, you are moving something against what? Friction. Okay, friction. And that is work. The ability to move this the capacity to do this is energy. You need energy to move the cart. Or 
I need to lift up a, a heavy dumbbell. Then I'm lifting the dumbbell against the what? Gravity. And that is also what? Work. Okay, work. So that's one type of energy. Another type of energy is heat. Okay, heat. Heat is something that flows from a hotter to a colder object. So temperature is the only factor that determines the direction of heat flow. Okay, something, some energy from hotter object to colder object, and that is called heat. It is also energy. Okay, it's also energy. The unit, okay, the unit of energy are listed here, the most commonly used, and both are commonly used, in fact. The first unit, called Joule, in capital J, is the international unit. We call that SI unit, okay, the international unit of energy. Joule is a very small amount of energy. One Joule is a very small amount of energy. Okay, how small? You can use the description. Is If you raise a one kilogram, so one kilogram is about 2.2 about pounds. Like a two pounds of an object, 10 centimeters, like this much high against gravity. So if you have a, like a cup full of water, probably like a two pounds, if you lift it like ten, this much, that much energy you used will be one joule, which is very small. Okay, very small. Okay, but that's the basic unit or systematic unit for energy. Another unit we also use a lot, it's called a calorie. Okay, calorie, but pay attention, this calorie here, the abbreviation for this calorie here is all lowercase. And even when we say the word calorie is also lowercase. This calorie is a bigger unit than joule. How much bigger? Here, one calorie equals to 4.184 joule. Okay, one calorie equals to 4.184 joule. Now, how much is one calorie? Here is the description. The energy or the heat required to raise the temperature of water, of one gram of water, by one degree Celsius. If you have one gram water, basically, it's like your thumb size of, you know how one gram is, it's like one milliliter of water, okay, very tiny amount of water. Raise that amount of water, the temperature of it by one degree. That amount of energy is called one calorie. These are how the energy are defined, especially calorie. And this is the relation between the conversion between calorie and joule, 4.184. Okay, 4.184. And you will see that number again, actually. What, where does the 4.184 come from? It's from the specific heat of water. Okay, we're going to even discuss that in chapter 5. Now, another unit, okay, another unit you will see is called kcal. Okay, kcal. Kcal. K stands for a thousand. So one K cal is what? A thousand K, which equals to 4,184 joules. Okay, why we use K cal? Because like I said, no, both joule and calorie are what? Small units. They're very small of energy. And normally, when we deal with energy from combustion, the amount of energy is much more than joule and calorie. That's why sometimes we use kjoule or kcal. The k is simply a prefix used to what? Used to raise it to a big amount. Okay, one k is a thousand. Okay, a thousand. Now, again, these two units are what you will see in a textbook or in scientific literature, but there is another unit of energy, also called a calorie which is probably the one you see the most, but we don't use them, okay? This calorie, okay, the difference is the C-A-L is in capital letter C, okay? We call that big calorie, okay, big calorie. That calorie is called nutritional calorie or food calorie, okay, food calorie. If you look at the food label, okay, just, that's why you guys see, you guys probably see this one the most. If you look at a food label, it will tell you a serving of a certain food, ice cream, cereal, how much calorie that is. And you will notice that that calorie is always in capital C. Okay, capital C. That is, again, a food calorie. 
Okay, what is a full calorie? A full calorie cal equals to what? A thousand lowercase calorie. So a big, big capital cal is basically a what? A K cal. Does it make sense? So 425 big cal is what? 425 K cal. Okay, 425K cal. So here is some very simple practice. They ask you, can you can you calculate 425 cal into K joule? Okay, here's the conversion. Again, 425 K cal equals to 445 what? K cal. And we know one cal is 4.184 what? Joule. And then I put K on both. I can cancel because there have a K here, so I can put K on both. So K cal, K cal canceled, 425 times 4.8184, you get this much of K joule. Okay, again, where does this conversion factor come from? Come from here. One calorie is what? 4.184. Okay, what we can use K? If I use K, K here, I can use K here. If I multiply it out. So one K calorie equals to what? 4.184 K joule because you got K on both sides. And that is why here you can see that K cal, K joule. As long as the relation is 1 and 4.184. Okay, so uh, again, this is what we see in our daily life, but they're different. Okay, different. The calorie we see a lot is in capital K, a uh, capital C. K, capital C. And this is the chart. Okay, this is the chart showing you. Uh, different process, okay, different process release different amount of energy and their scale, con 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 contextual comparison of different amount of energy, you can take a look. Okay, to give an idea, because again, energy is a very abstract, okay, abstract term, right? It's a lot like, not like mass, grams, you can physically feel okay, how heavy or, or volume, you can see how big or how small that is. Energy, you cannot feel it most of the time. So here is something to give an idea. For example, the, the, the light bulb, five hours, or five hours of use, how much joules of energy, around a million joules of energy. Okay, like an atomic bomb is 10 to the 12, a trillion joules of energy. And uh, an apple, to, to lift an apple to a height of one meter, how much joule of, like a 10 joule of energy, et cetera. So given a certain idea about different process releases or takes how much energy. So it's to show you how much joules and again give a conceptual idea about the the scales of, of different energies. Okay? Next. Okay, next. Energy can be mainly classified into two types. Okay, two types. One type is called Kinetic energy, and now the type is called potential energy. Okay, potential. These are the two types of energies. Kinetic energy is the energy of motion. Okay, energy of motion. So if an object, okay, if an object such as the arrow, okay, such as an arrow, if it has mass and it is in motion, motion means what? It's moving. Then that object will possess kinetic energy. Okay, that's what we call kinetic energy is the energy of motion. As long as an object has mass and in motion, then we call that energy kinetic energy. Another type of energy which is a little more difficult or, or a little more abstract to understand called the potential is the energy held by an object, held by an object because of its position or because of the stress or because of the electric charge. I put this in red because it's related to what we're learning in this chapter. Okay, you can see there are three things that will cause an object to hold potential energy. The position, the stress, and the electric charge. Okay, I'll give you an example for each. The position, for example, if I held my bottle of water up in the air, then this Bottle of water, because it is pulled by gravity. So you now you see this object has, what, has a position. And because it has pulled by gravity, that means this object possesses what? Potential energy. 
Because when I release my hand, this water is gonna what? Gonna drop. Okay, gonna move, gonna have kinetic energy. So because of the potential of because of the position of this object, this object produces what? Potential energy. Stress. Take a look at the ball. When you pull the ball, what happens? The ball is what? The spring is what? Stressed, right? Before re you release it, this ball has what? Potential energy. Just like you're pulling a string, right? If you hold the string tight, the string has what? Potential energy. But when you release it, the potential energy is going to be converted to what? The kinetic, the same. Where does the kinetic energy of this guy come from? From what? From the potential energy when you what? Pull the ball. Okay, and the last one is electric charge. Electric charge. This electric charge thing is very similar to what I what I put here. Remember, we said this bottle has potential energy. Why it has potential? Because it's position, right? What what does the position mean? The position means is what? Raised above what? The ground. So the reason this guy has potential energy because there's a force pulling it. What is the force? Gravity pulling it, right? So if you understand that, you can understand why electric charge can cause potential energy. Think about it. when we have a chemical bond, okay, when we have a chemical bond, the chemical bond, when we draw a line of chemical bond, that line means what? When we have a chemical bond, when we draw a line, right? A bond, atom bond with B. That line we draw, we call it a chemical bond. That bond is actually what? Shared electrons. Shared pair of what? Electrons, right? Those shared electrons are what charged? Negative. Negatively charged. Is that right? Think about the negatively charged electrons in that bond are connecting what? Two atoms. Is that right? What are, what are the charges for the nucleus of these two atoms? Nucleus. Positive. Why? Because they have what? Protons in there, right? So think about it. The essence of a bond is basically what? The electrons between attracting both what? positively charged nucleus what? Together, right? And because of that electric charge, you're holding things what? Tight together. And that is very similar to the gravity thing. Those atoms or the bond possess what? Potential energy. Okay, that brings us here. It brings us here. The energy, okay, the energy stored in chemical bond, okay, in chemical bond, are what energy? Potential energy. Why is that? Because the electrons are holding what? Nucleuses together, holding atoms together, due to what? Electric charge. Very similar is just like the gravity is pulling something when you hold it. Okay, when you hold it. So that means when small molecules bind together to make big molecules. This process needs what? Need energy in. Why? Because you're actually storing potential energy in what? In large molecules. On the other hand, when we break down the large molecules into smaller molecules or atoms, then we're actually releasing the potential energy what? Out. Does this scheme make sense to you guys? Okay, first understand the energy in bonding are what? Potential. Because of what? Because of the charge, electric charge. Okay, because of electric charge. So that means when small molecules or atoms, when they're trying to make bigger molecules, this process is energy in process. Means what? You're taking energy in to build what? Big molecules, because these are what? Energy stored. Okay, energy stored. The same, when you break down molecules, then the stored energy needs to what? Release out. 
Okay, so that's an energy out process. This chart, okay, this chart is very important when we understand the formation of fossil fuels. Okay, fossil fuels. But first, you need to know they are potential energies. Okay, they are potential. We'll see this chart again. We'll, we'll see this chart again when we discuss fossil fuels. Okay, we'll save it here, but keep in mind what are potential energies. Okay, next. When we study energy, no matter you're studying physics or chemistry, the most important thing is you know the first law of thermodynamics. That's the most important law so far related to energy. Okay, what is the first law? The first law states the energy of the universe is constant, meaning Energy can never be created or destroyed. It can only be converted from one form to a another. Meaning what? You can never create energy. The energy, whatever you're using, is what? From what? Somewhere else. Does it make sense? Okay, no matter what energy you're using. For example, you're using the power from for power your, your laptop. That energy is from where? from electricity. Where does the electricity energy come from? We'll see that in a few minutes. So you never created energy. The energy we're using, no matter from where, came from somewhere. That's the first law. Because the whole universe, energy is what? Is constant. This is the, the toy called Newton, Newton's Cradle. You can see that. They will stop eventually. But, but you can see that when this guy moves, it possess what energy? Moves. Possess what? Kinetic, right? But when it hits the ball, the other guy is gonna what? Move up. Means what? The kinetic energy of this ball is passed to where? To that ball. Okay, you wanna see who started it? You have to start it. Then you are using your what? Your energies to what? To start the device. Okay, to start the device. Now, with that in mind, okay, with that in mind, Let's take a look. How does a power plant work? Okay, how does the power plant? This is the scheme of a fossil fuel burning power plant, which is the one actually we use most of the, the case. Okay, you, you may heard of different types of power plants. You may heard of nuclear power plant, we studied as well. But the majority of electricity in the world are generated by this process. Burning what? Burning fossil fuels. Okay, burning one type of fossil fuel. Most times coal. Okay, some even burn gasoline or natural gas to generate electricity, but most time burning coals. Okay, most time burning coals. But we will use that to demonstrate, of course, how power plants work and more importantly, show you the first law of thermodynamics as a real case example. Okay, this is how it works. No matter what type of power plant, it has a burner. Burner means what? Burn fuel. And what that the burner does is just burn the fuel and release the what? The heat of it. The heat is used to what? To boil a body of water. Okay, body of water. Now, of course, this body of water is in a very sealed system. Okay, and the, the wall of the, the furnace and everything is, is sealed. Okay, it's sealed. That means it can tolerate high temperature and high pressure. And when the water boils, the water will become what? Steam. Okay, very hot steam, hotter than the one you, you saw in your daily cooking because again, the whole thing is pressurized. Okay, so temperature is higher than regular water steam. And the steam, okay, the steam, okay, the steam will turn the turbine. Okay, the steam has kinetic energy. Will what? Turn the turbine. And then the turbine generate what? Electricity. It generate electricity. Now, when you look at this process, eventually we get electricity, which is what? Energy, a type of energy. But if you think about this, the electricity energy came from what? Came from the turbine, right? Where does the turbine energy come from? From hot steam, okay, hot steam. And where does the hot steam, the heat of energy, uh, hot steam energy come from? From hot water. Where does the energy of hot water come from? From the burner. 
Okay, where does the burner provide energy? From what? From fuel. So you can see that the electricity energy is nothing you created. You just converted what? The potential energy from the fuel into what? Into electricity. Okay, into electricity. Okay, this shows you the conversion. Okay, potential energy, kinetic energy of the of the of the steam, and then mechanical energy, which is kind of like kinetic energy of the turbine, and then what? Electric energy. Okay, electric energy. And of course, okay, I will study this part as well because we'll see this chart more than once actually. When we study nuclear reaction, we're gonna compare power plant traditional power plant with a nuclear power plant, okay, nuclear power plant, is after the hot steam turns the turbine, it's still hot. So in order for the, the whole thing, the, the, the whole pressurized seal system to work, then the hot steam has to be what? Cool down, okay, cool down. So the hot steam needs to pass a condenser. Okay, condenser, the purpose condenser is what? to cool down the hot steam into water, then being pumped back to what? To the boiler. Okay, to the boiler. The condenser, of course, is circulating with cooler water, cooler water, which is normally connected with a large body of water. Okay, either they have a power plant, if they have a big pool, okay, big pool, or they may have a small lake nearby. Okay, nearby. Later on, you're gonna see that for nuclear power plant, they even have a big lake nearby. They need the cooler body water to what? To cool down the, the hot steam. Okay, to cool the hot steam. So this is the general scheme of a cool burning power plant. Okay, cool burning power plant. Now, like I said, most traditional power plant, fossil fuel burning power plant, they burn coal. Okay, burning coal. So we want to answer, where does the energy in coal come from? Right, we know energy can never be created. So your electricity is from the potential energy in coal. Then where does the energy in coal come from? Okay, you're not creating energy from the coal. Coal is formed somewhere, but where does the energy come from? You can answer the question. Okay, first take a look, the, the chart shows you uh, the coal consumption in, in different what different regions the listed Asia uh, Pacific Africa Middle East you can see that Asia and, and maybe these most developed place or developing price are, are actually the one consume the most of the coal Asia Europe and North America and you can see 92% of the all US coal are used on what generating power so again, many times people were talking about, I'm driving an electric car. I, I'm not putting, I'm not putting emissions to, to the fact. But you have to think in different ways. Your electricity of the electric car came from what? Still came from burning coal. Okay, again, majority of the electricity in the world are coming from burning coal. Okay, you can see unit US, 92% of the coal is for what? For generating electricity. Okay, of course, if you use more power, your industry is heavier, you need more energy, and you need more what? You need more coal. Of course, coal using is not like an ancient, it's, it's actually new. You can see here, the data shown here, wood was used as the main source. You're actually, we're actually burning woods until what? Until 1960, very recent, like 60 years, 70 years ago. Uh, uh, 70, uh, hold on, 40 plus, yeah, 60 years ago, we started to use coal as a what? As a main source. Before that, we actually, people were using what? Using wood, okay, burning wood. Now, the same question is, no matter wood or coal, where does the potential energy in fuel, their fuel, right, come from? Okay, they came from that reaction. Okay, this reaction tells a lot. First, this reaction is called photosynthesis. You guys have heard of it, right? When you were in high school, biology or whatever, nature class, you have heard of this reaction called a photosynthesis. What is photosynthesis? 
photosynthesis is plants, green plants. They utilize sunlight. They use small molecules like CO2 and H2O to build large molecules, mainly glucose. Okay, the sugar here means glucose. Okay, mainly glucose. So you get a lot of information here. First is, what energy does plant use? What? Sunlight. Means what? Means coal, wood, whatever. The energy is from what? From the sun. Yeah, from the sun. And also, not only that, the energy in this whole solar system, <coughs> we're living in a solar system, right, with eight planets, are all from what? From the sun. Okay, we're using solar energy, which is not using it directly, we're using what? As fuel. And now you can take a look at this photosynthesis reaction. It is the same reaction we have just shown, like I said, that's why I ask you to memorize this chart, like this one. You see that? Small molecules or atoms to make bigger molecules is what? Energy in, is that right? They store energy in what? In chemical bond. Now, in this case, you know that when small molecules make big molecules, they store energy in this large molecule. But what energy is stored? Solar energy is stored in large molecules. So it's actually the plants help us to what? to store energy from the sun. Okay, from the sun. Now you may wonder why. Now, here again is the reaction. Okay, small molecules take solar energy, store solar energy in what? In large molecules, glucose. Okay, large molecules, glucose. And of course, in this case, solar energy becomes what? Potential energy in what? In glucose. Does it make sense? Now this reaction, okay, this reaction, because energy is absorbed, okay, because energy is absorbed, we call it an endothermic reaction. Endo means what? Taking taking energy. What is endothermic? Again, energy is absorbed. So what can we tell if a reaction is endothermic? In endothermic reaction, because energy is absorbed, so your product will have higher energy than what? Than the reactants, because you take energy inside. So the product will have more energy than what? Than the reactants. So the change of energy, delta means change, E means energy, the change of energy will be a positive number. This is very similar like your bank account. If your money in, then your final number will be what? Higher than your what? Than your initial. So what is the change? The change will be what? Positive. Is that right? The same here. If you take energy in, your final energy will be higher than initial. So delta means final minus initial will be what? Will be positive. That's a very important sign for endothermic reaction. Delta E will be positive. In this case, is this much kilojoule. You can see for each one mole of glucose formed, you're getting 2,840 kilojoule of energy stored. Of course, you guys know what is glucose. Glucose is a small sugar, six carbons. This is the basic units for plants. But glucose will bind together, okay, bind together, to make a big molecule, okay, big, big molecule, and the chain of glucose will be tied together to form a microfiber. And the microfiber will chain together to make a bigger fiber, bigger fiber, until you see this. So what you see here outside the window, grass, trees, they're actually what? 
they're actually polymers of glucose. And we call this cellulose. Do you still remember that word cellulose? We talked about in the very beginning. Termite is what? The one that breaks down the cellulose. Okay, what is cellulose? A huge polymer of glucose. Where does glucose come from? From photosynthesis. So basically, when you look at the outside the window, the trees and grass, they're actually stored what? They're stored form of sunlight. These are energy in there already. Okay, that's why, remember earlier we said, before coal becomes popular, we use what? We burn wood. Is that right? Why we can burn wood? Because wood is a store of energy of what? Of the sun. Okay, why? Because wood is a big molecule of what? Of a lot of glucose binding together. They bind together. Now, of course, normally we don't burn wood, especially nowadays. You don't burn wood to drive your car. You don't burn wood to drive your, to power a power plant, right? You, you use fossil energy. So what's the difference? Where does fossil energy, uh, fossil fuel come from? And from this long, long, long time process. It takes millions of years. You see, this is a kind of like cartoon scheme shows you the formation of coal. Okay, what is coal? Coal basically is the dead body of what? of ancient trees, grass, whatever living things there. When they die, they got buried under the ground. And when they got buried deeper and deeper, under extremely high heat and high pressure, pressure, and also after millions of years, the color of that big chunk of dead forest, for example, will become darker and darker and darker until it becomes what? Coal. So what is coal? Coal is basically time help us to what? Compress what? Wood. You can understand that. What is wood again? Energy. Stored from where? From the sun. So basically the one we're burning today, wood, coal, is still the ancient solar energy what stored a million years ago does it make sense okay again shows you again it takes millions of years how do we understand millions of years in the lifespan a spam of mankind you will never see new coal generate again because i don't think any any species on this planet can last a million years okay by the time you see new like trees buried today if they want to become coal maybe the planet has no living things anymore so that's why it takes long, long, long time. The one we're using today is millions of years back. Okay, millions of years back. And here this picture shows you different types of coal. Okay, coal doesn't all come in shiny black. Black, Of course, more shinier, more darker color, the heat content is bigger. That means better coal. Okay, but some coal is lighter in color. Okay, lighter in color. Some coal even has, has yellowish color and that's not even considered as a coal but still it's not wood so it's something between okay so this is a different types of coal okay different types of coal and this picture shows you as well you can see this is the uh, brown coal it's not really classified as kind of, kind of light light and this is the best one anthracite this is very shiny dark solid okay and uh, they're from different states okay different states and here is the heat content of these coals. Okay, heat content means what? Burning of one gram of these different types of coal, how much energy can be released? Of course, higher heat content means what? The coal grade is better. Okay, you can see that they are comparing with wood. Compared with wood. Even the peat, those, this is peat. Okay, this is peat. Not, even not a coal, but you can see that the heat content is still what? Better than wood. Okay, reason, the reason is they're still partially decayed. Okay, decayed, compressed already, but not long time enough. So they're not really classified as a coal, but the heat content is still better than what? Than burning, burning wood. Okay, burning wood. Again, we will use this number again in our calculations, but the best coal, okay, the highest ener energy normally can release per gram of coal is 30 kilojoule. Okay, 30 kilojoule. Now, 
here is the summary of okay, summary what we have seen so far about combustion, about formation of coal, is the cycle. Is the cycle. During photosynthesis, the plant does what? Store solar energy for us to what? To make big molecules. Okay, wood, longer time it becomes coal. And then what we're doing is to burn the plant materials, no matter burning wood or burning coal, coal is Asian plant, in what? Release the energy what? Out for us what? For us to use. And of course, the product of the combustion, we study in chapter one and two are what? Carbon dioxide and water, right? They can be used by plants to do what? Do the photosynthesis again. Okay, you can see it's a very beautiful cycle. Okay, we actually can use the energy from plants, and plants can what? Can make more wood. Again, the plant can may not make more coal for us, but can make more wood. This can be a sustainable way. But again, the energy stored and energy released are both what? Potential energy. Does that make sense? Okay, both potential. Because they're stored or in what? In large molecules, chemical bond. Okay, large molecules, chemical bond. Okay, next. Okay, next. Even though coal is one of the main fossil fuels we're using nowadays to generate electricity. Okay, but like, like it says here, not so fast. Okay, not so fast. Why not so fast? Why burning coal is not, there's a very word, you, you, heard, you probably hear this word a lot, whenever you talk about energy, is sustainable, okay, sustainable. Why burning coal is not very sustainable? Three reasons I listed here for you already. The first reason is, how to pronounce that word, finite, infinite, Finite, we don't use that word a lot. We use infinite a lot, but finite. Finite or finite? You guys know? I think it's finite. Finite? Yeah. Finite? Okay, finite. Yeah, we don't, we don't use that word a lot. Finite means what? It will deplete. There's no way you can save, you can just generate new coals. Okay, you use it and you use them all now, you use them all now. There's nothing can be regenerated. Okay, number two is Burning coal releases sulfur, which we have seen that already in chapter one. In chapter one, right? What is the main source of carbon uh, sulfur dioxide? Is what? Burning coal. Okay, later on we're gonna study next next lecture, we're gonna study why burning coal releases sulfur. Number three factor is something you don't think about often is the efficiency of burning coal is actually low. Okay, what is the efficiency? Remember, the purpose of burning coal, like we demonstrated before, is to use the energy to do what? To generate what? Electricity. So we're converting the energy from the coal into what? Into the electricity. Ideally, what we want is, of course, to convert what? All the energy in coal into what? Into electricity. But in fact, in fact, owning 35 to 50 percent of the energy in coal burning ended up into electricity. That means what? More than 50 percent of the energy is what? Lost during burning. Lost during the hot steam, lost in the burner, dust in the furnace. The efficiency of a power plant, you can see that, is the electricity generated over the total heat from the fuel is only 35 to what? To 50 percent. A lot of heat is wasted as useless heat released. It really is, you actually don't use that amount of heat. Okay. Of course, here's a, something you can read about coal fuel power plant, how to improve the efficiency. Okay, there's a tech limit. Okay, if you want the efficiency higher, you need a higher temperature of the steam, but higher temperature, you need what? 
you need a better build of the furnace and a better build of the pressure resistance. You cannot let the temperature and, and the pressure too high. There's a limit of technology. Okay, so coal burning, even we're using the energy, we're not using the energy in a, in a good way because the efficiency is what? Efficiency is still low. Okay, efficiency is still low. We have 10 minutes. I think we can finish this. Let's finish that before we uh, stop in the next topic. First topic. But if you think of that, okay, think of that. We said energy can be converted from one form to another. Energy cannot be created or destroyed. And a lot of energy from coal burning is what? Is wasted, right? As heat. So is there any way we can grab the heat? lost and put it back to coal is that would that be amazing if we can just trap the heat and put it back to coal and why that's not possible why nobody does that why the heat is lost is lost we never think about it. we take the heat and put it back to coal once the heat is released why we cannot put it back it is actually related to the second law of thermodynamics okay you know to understand that take a look at this Device again. Okay, just says again. We know after you start the device, no matter how good the balls are machined, eventually this device is going to what? Stop. Why did it stop? Because no matter how the balls are machined, there's still gonna be some what? Friction. Whenever there's a click. Right? These are man-made bearings. When there's a friction, that means there's heat. So every click, there's a tiny amount of heat, what? Released. Remember, energy can never be destroyed away. So every click, you got some energy loss. So eventually, the ball rising is going to be lower and lower and lower. Eventually, what? Stops. It stops. And of course, once the stop, do you think it will restart? Do you think the heat released in the air can go back to the ball and restart it? No, unless you restart it. What happened? Why is that? Because during the process, there is a term, okay, there, this, I'm pretty sure there's a new term for you guys, entropy increased. What is entropy? This picture shows you what is entropy. Entropy is a measure of how much energy gets dispersed or how disorder or randomness of a system is. how much energy gets dispersed or the disorder or randomness of a system. So it is the, the term to describe what? Describe the randomness or the disorder or how heat get what? Dissipated or dispersed. Here this picture shows you better. If something is highly organized, we call the entropy is what? Small. If something is like this, totally disordered, break down, then we call entropy as what? As big. So what is entropy? Some term to describe what? The disorder or randomness of a system. Okay, so it's a very hard to understand term. But what we care the most is not entropy itself, but the change of entropy. What is change? Increase or what? Decrease is called change. So that means we care most is whether a process increase entropy or decrease entropy. As long as you can understand, you don't even care about entropy. So for example, again, from here to here, because the whole system, whatever the system is, becomes more what? Random, more disorder. That means the entropy what? Increase. Does it make sense? On the other hand, if I put them back okay, into a nice organized way, then entropy what? Decrease. Does it make sense? Or, like we said, when the energy of potential and kinetic, when they are 
dispersed in the atmosphere. Remember, the heat is what? Dispersed. What do you think the entropy happened? The entropy what? Increased. Why is that? Because when the ball stopped, okay, when the ball stopped, the energy gets what? Dispersed. The energy is no longer here. The old energy is where? Everywhere in the atmosphere, surroundings. So that means the energy gets more what? Dispersed. So this process, entropy, also what? Increased. Does it make sense? Again, you kind of know what entropy is, but you have to know. Or we care most is whether a process and entropy increases or what? Decrease. We care the change more than we care what entropy is itself. Okay, here I'll give you more examples of entropy. Think about these three states we learned in chapter one. Solid, liquid, and gas. Take a look, this is the entropy. From solid to liquid to gas, you can see that the system becomes more and more what? Disorder, right? Especially gas is what? Totally random, totally disorder. Take a look at the entropy. Solid entropy is around here. Liquid entropy is around here. Gas entropy is what? The highest. Means what? Change from solid to liquid to gas. The entropy is actually what? Increasing. Does it make sense? Why? Because the molecule gets more and more what? Random. Get dispersed. Gets more random, more disorder. Now, if you take a look at the chart, this is temperature, actually. Okay, we know from solid to liquid is what? Kind of melting, right? This is from liquid to gas is called what? Kind of boiling. But if you look at, for example, the solid, even before changing to liquid, the entropy is actually increasing as the temperature increases. You see that? As you get higher temperature, the, temp the entropy is what? Going up. What do you think that is the case? Can you explain using what we learned about entropy? Wild gas, gas if you want. Why do you think that's the case? It's adding energy and it's just becoming more disorganized. Kind of like that. Think about it. Imagine we're monocles, right? We're more monocles. We're sitting here, we're cool, we're chill. Think about if the temperature of the room gets hotter and hotter, what will we do? We may be walking around, we may fan ourselves. What's going on? Because temperature is higher, the particle is getting more and more what? Excited. So even though it looks like they're moving, they're actually still moving. Even though they look like they're still, they're moving. So because temperature is higher, this guy will move what? Faster. When they move faster, reflection is what? The system becomes more and more what? Disordered. Is that right? Like we, we are here sitting nicely. But when it's hot, imagine that. When, when the temperature may be 90 degrees in the room, what would you guys do? You guys may be fanning, sweating, wetting your mouth. That's disorder, right? Then entropy is what? Increasing. You see that? So you can see that entropy is increasing when you increase the temperature. And then when the whole thing melts down, the entropy has a big jump. You see that? And then the same liquid, entropy increases. And when you boil, become gas, the entropy what? Big jump again. So this, again, the chart is trying to help you better understand what? What is entropy? Okay, what is entropy? Okay, we'll need to stop here, I think. We don't have time, but we'll catch up. Uh, next time talk about more entropy then we'll start about the second law of thermodynamics on Thursday okay, let me start the report I thought I could finish this part it's very short but we use some time to